Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I. B. Deganji reporting for the Media Speaks. This is great. Somebody very close to me just accused me of having a midlife crisis, and I think that's great because the only thing that anybody my age has, and I'm ancient, I'm like 42. The only thing anybody my age has more of that I would want maybe is money. I, my generation is a sellout. My generation is a bunch of idiots. Uh, we had the world by the balls back when the world was alternative. And now alternative is a catchphrase. I hate my generation. Um, some of them might be rich. I might be envious of their money a little bit. But I snowboard. My girlfriend is gorgeous. I DJ in a strip club, yeah, midlife crisis, my ass. I'm the luckiest 42-year-old that ever lived. Friends, you're listening to the correct views. Sam I beating Angie reporting for the Media Speaks, letting my regular listeners in on some of the uh, ridiculous things I hear online. Because, friends, the correct views is all about the dunce cap of the month, once a month. And you know what that is. It is the biggest collection of idiots that you've ever seen. And I just gave you the first idiot. Guys, we've got idiots all night long. This is going to be one of the funniest shows that you've ever watched. Low def right here, high def right there. We're going to give you the idiots that run our world. Christelle is making the single funniest dunce cap of the month award that you've ever seen she just made a dunce cap and friends we have idiots today in ways that you have never before imagined and we're going to get right into it this is from shtfplan.com the only proof you need of a massive bubble a grilled cheese truck is worth 25 million dollars now, does anybody listening to this think that you can make $25 million with a grilled cheese truck that is a box truck with a paint job? Probably not. If you do, then maybe you'll get the dunce cap of the month award. Friends, listen to this. If you listen to mainstream financial pundits of any sort of regular basis, then you'd likely believe that current stock market valuations are just the beginning of the next big boom. Despite hazy unemployment figures, it says, low consumer sentiment, raising debts, collapsing trade, and continued degradation of the middle class, stock markets are at all-time highs. But, and you can call us crazy here because it goes against everything we've been told about the growth of the economy and stability of financial markets. It is possible that maybe, just maybe, we have reached irrational levels of market exuberance. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that if you're calling a cheese truck $25 million worth of assets, that maybe we've gone a little bit too exuberant. Just a bit. The following report from highlights a company that was recently valued at over a hundred million dollars and it just might provide all of the proof that you need that we are witnessing a massive stock bubble. Why does that matter for those of you that are new to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award? Because every time they make a bubble, you and I, we're the ones that end up getting hosed. Either that or the new 21st century accounting methods are somehow determined that a company with four food trucks is now worth a thousand times more than their actual profit. In other words, it's valued at one, not 100 times, 1,000 times more than they've actually ever made. It says, in the real world, where the Federal Reserve can print endless supplies of money and large financial institutions can borrow without collateral or interest, we guess that it makes complete sense that the following food truck holds an estimated market-to-market -market value of about $25 million. So seriously, they apparently make one hell of a grilled cheese sandwich. This is from Zero Hedge. Markets are allowed their petty indiscretions, of course, but these petty indiscretions seem to be piling up. Bloomberg last week drew attention to the fact that shares of the Grilled Cheese Truck Incorporated had commenced trading at the OTCQX marketplace under the ticker GRLD. Let's look at the fundamentals of the Fort Lauderdale, Florida-based company. 
based on the 18 million shares standing and recent stock price of $6, the company has a market value of $108 million. No matter how much you like grilled cheese, it just can't see that this is a reasonable evaluation. If you go to the company's website, you'll learn that the company currently operates and licenses grilled cheese trucks in Los Angeles, California, around Phoenix, Arizona, and is expanding into additional markets with the goal of becoming the largest operator of gourmet grilled cheese space. I'll tell you what, friends. My high school buddy, Mike Hare, free shout out to uh, Cheese Louise in downtown Canton. Gourmet cheese at its best. Mike, are you worth a hundred and eight million dollars? I bet you're not. This is ridiculous. You have to be a bonehead to believe this. According to the company's financial statements, it has about a hundred million dollars in assets and almost three million dollars in liabilities. In the third quarter of 2014, it had sales of a hundred million dollars, of which it had a net loss of nine hundred thousand dollars. That is the way we're starting our dunce cap of the month, and we're only going to get stupider the further down. On we go. This is from BizPack Review. Black blogger race bully humiliates QVC host into apologizing for absolutely nothing. Last week, a QVC shopping channel host was humiliated into apologizing for an alleged slur supposedly directed against a black model that was completely fabricated by a race-baiting blogger. In other words, there was no racism. An on-air segment contained absolutely no conversation that was even connected to the black model displaying her Dooney and Burke purse on the camera. Describing the timeless ha handbag style, the ho host said, you may look back and think, why did I ever wear my hair like that? But you'll like the bag still. Here's the clip, and there's a clip in the article here at Prison Planet. Remarks made by Sandra Bennett, and it says, uh, see if you can tell what the problem was. It says, did you spot it? No. That's because no one on the set, including the model, who was Michelle Holloway, thought that there was anything offensive or racist or out of the ordinary happening. Yet, a blogger that goes by the handle bougie black girl who's an idiot was offended. Well, she deserves to be offended. She offends us with her stupidity. She asked Bennett why she felt it was necessary to humiliate Holloway on air. What? Humiliate? You may want to take a second to look at the video. The host tweeted back that she wasn't even talking about the model. The back and forth took place on Twitter. Holloway later deleted her tweets, but the Daily Mail obtained them. Basically, because the girl had kinky black hair, the blogger automatically wrongly assumed that that somehow was a reflection on the hairstyle that the African-American person was born with. You know what? This is boneheaded. Let me tell you what... He didn't even look at the model. The, 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 she, I should say, didn't even look at the model. It was simply like saying, um, 20 years from now, Sam might regret wearing this hat, but he won't regret this really cool shirt. Um, nothing to do with what color the person is. And the reason this makes it on the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show is because they love to do this. They love to make it look like most whites and most blacks don't get along. And you want to know what? That's not the case. Most blacks I know have zero problem with my white ass. And most white people I know have zero problem with anybody who is black. Unless, of course, they have a problem with them and vice versa. The reason that this is so extant today is because if the powers that be can make us fight, then we won't realize how bad we're being hosed by them. There was no racism here. You want more dumb? You want to get dumber? Well, hell, we can get dumber. Public University spends $16,000 on a campaign to warn students to watch what they say. Now, let me ask you something. How many people listening to this were trying to go to college and they couldn't get the money to go no matter what? I'm one of those people. I didn't Oops, sorry guys. I didn't get to go to college until I was uh, 20, almost, almost 29 years old. They are giving money away to the tune of 
thousand dollars for the utmost height of stupidity here. Inclusive language campaign debuts at the University of Michigan. So why am I commentating on this? Because I want you to call the University of Michigan and let them know just how stupid you think they are and let them know that you don't appreciate them giving $16,000 away for boneheadedness when you're trying to get an education. Dozens of posters plastered across the, what should be disgraced, University of Michigan, caution students not to say things that might hurt others' feelings. Part of a new inclusive language campaign at the state's flagship public university at a cost of $16,000 to implement. Let me tell you what. I hope that I offend you. I hope that I offend you so freaking bad that you feel like you wasted your 16 grand, you stupid ass monkeys. Words declared unacceptable through the campaign incurred crazy, insane, retarded, gay, tranny, gipped, illegal alien, fag, ghetto, and raghead. Phrases such as, I want to die, and that test raped me, were also verboten. So let me say that I think the Uni of Michigan is crazy, insane, retarded, gay, made up of trannies, gyped, illegal aliens, fags, faggots, ghetto hoods, and ragheads. I want to die when I see what they do. How's that? Welcome to the Dunce Cap of the Month Award, you idiots. What a way to waste $16,000 that somebody might have been able to use for something useful. Uh, friends, if only I sent out Dunce Caps to other countries. You can donate at the correct views at hotmail.com. And if you do, maybe I can afford to do so at future shows. UK school bans the students from looking at distracting snow. Now, if you're like me, you have to ask, what is distracting snow as opposed to non-distracting snow? I mean, if in fact you are barred from looking, or how should I say this? If you're barred from looking at distracting snow, then are you allowed in some way to look at uh, non-distracting snow? And if so, what is the difference? And if this sounds like absolute mind rot to you, that's because it is. That's because it is absolute stupidity and you would have to be an idiot to fall for it. Listen to this. Mikhail Thalen uh, writes, a primary school in the United Kingdom has banned the students from touching or even looking at snow due to its distracting and unsafe nature. You know how those snowmen can attack without notice. According to the Daily Mail, students at Stalham Academy near Great Yarmouth, Norfolk, were marshaled indoors shortly before school began last week after less than one centimeter of snow fell on the ground. After students were ordered not to go near the snow for the remainder of the school day, a classroom full of 8th and 9th year, eight, eight, nine year olds were accused of allowing the snow to distract them, prompting a teacher to close the blinds and ban the class from looking outside. School administrators had the audacity, mind you, to defend the decision by calling the snow a safety issue arguing that the ban was in line with school policy. <laughs> Over the course of the day, the ice had not cleared by break time, and on Monday, a sleet of snow showers prevented outdoor play at lunchtime. A statement read, having discussed the matter with the class teacher in question, she noted that the heavy snowfall was having an impact upon the learning of the children during one of the, her lessons. So the blinds were closed to ensure the children focused on the tasks at hand. In other words, rather than saying if everybody in class does their work, then we will allow you five minutes, ten minutes to play in the snow, 
they have managed to ban snow, not because it's distracting, but unsafe. Oh, God. Steve Watson, prison planet. School principal calls the FBI after an eighth grader throws a made in China flag out the window. Now, keep in mind that we outsource the making of flags to what is basically an enemy country. We're just too proud to admit it. The kid rebels against the fact that the flag is made in China and he is called anti American. Meanwhile, the Chinese, as we have reported on here, have released images of nuclear mushroom clouds going off over American cities, and that somehow is not supposed to be perceived as anti-American, but God, this eighth grader needed the Federal Bureau of Investigations that called upon him. Now, I'm not in favor of desecrating a flag. I, I, I'm not. But if you choose to do so, that is a, your right to do so. I, I think you're scum if you do, but you do have a right to be scum. A school principal in New Mexico is attempting to contact the government and have federal charges, no less, brought against a 14-year-old student who threw a small American flag on a stick out of the window. Robert Archulita, once the boy expelled and presumably arrested... Following the incident during which four students were misbehaving, also throwing other items such as workbooks out of the classroom window into the snow. So in other words, they were just grabbing things that had nothing to do with the flag. The principal initially called the school police officer with Rio Arriba County, but because he told them he wished to report as a federal offense, the cops referred him to the FBI, probably not believing that he'd be dumb enough to do it. A lot of men died over the flag. Men and women, Archuleta told reporters with KROE. A veteran from the military family, he said, we fought to keep this country safe and to keep it free. So, of course, the best thing to do isn't to reprimand the student, but is, of course, to call in uh, Clarice from the FBI. What the hell? Critics have noted that Archuleta doesn't seem to understand that he and others actually fought for the right to throw the flag out the window and not for the flag itself, and that is true. Am I in favor of it? No. The desecration of the flag has not been a punishable offense for close to half a century. That'd be 50 years for you hip-hop fans. Any action taken involving an American flag, no matter whether Archer agrees with it or not, is protected under the First Amendment. So not only is he trying to tarnish somebody, but he's wrong. So, I mean, he makes the Dunce Cap of the Month award on two different ways, if you will. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. We've got four more articles for you. Four articles of the dumbest stories you've ever heard. So please, by all means, make sure you don't tune out. I just wanted to remind you that this is all brought to you by Sticker Junkie. Sticker Junkie, it doesn't matter. Maybe you're not the greatest artist. Maybe you just have an idea that you think would be a cool sticker. If you can give some kind of an idea of what's in your head, guess what? D. Lake is a magician. David Lake, a sticker junkie, he will pull that vision out of your head and give you the best sticker you've ever had. Uh, thousands of them if you want. So do me a favor, get a hold of Sticker Junkie and make sure you let David Lake know you heard about it from the correct views. Friends, uh, moving on to on our Dunce Cap of the Month award story here. This is uh, brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, one of the coolest, most talented writers extant today of both fiction, nonfiction, and even poetry. Mike McLaughlin, look him up on Facebook.com and let him know you heard about him on the correct views. Kit Daniels, InfoWars, feminist. I aborted my baby because he was male. Now, it seems to me that unless she has a lot of friends who have a lot of money to pay men to uh, beat it into a cup, if you get rid of all the men in the world, then who, pray tell, is going to impregnate you, artificially or regular, to create new feminists? No one. Friends, this is so close to the stupidest thing I've heard all month. A feminist admitted that she aborted her baby because he was a boy. 
stating she, quote, couldn't bring another monster into the world and that her decision made a difference. Yeah, you made a difference because you are now included among the stupidest people extant today. A feminist, that is to say feminazi, Alana, said after discovering that her unborn baby was male, she began weeping at the thought of what she was about to curse the world with and decided that an abortion would make it right, completely blind to the fact that there won't be any more feminists if we don't have any more kids. It said, I went in for the procedure, and it was fairly later in my pregnancy, and I was aware that there were certain risks. But it went off without a hitch, she wrote. My body's betrayal was no more. I was free. I felt strong. Well, maybe if you hadn't betrayed your body by opening up your damn legs, you wouldn't be pregnant. Did How many of you feminists know, and I can prove it, pregnancy is caused by something in the air? Your legs, bitches! I had done something positive, something that would actually make a difference, something good, even though, as I would find out, many others wouldn't see it that way. And I don't mean women when I say bitches, which is FCC legal. No, I mean third wave feminists. And if you have a problem with it, good. I hope I offended you. She said the intense backlash that she received encouraged her to help shape the thoughts of young women today. Well, I mean, you can shape it into the shape of a penis if you want, but that's only going to lead to more pregnancies now, isn't it? As a modern feminist, you will need to be able to take this abuse in stride while I'm giving it to you. Remembering that it isn't always the person who is saying those hateful things, but it is their maladjusted, socially unaware upbringing speaking through their mouths or keyboards, she claimed. Well, I would like to clarify. Now, it is in fact me saying it, just to be clear. There are people out there who actually do want to see the demise of modern feminism. Oh, that would be me. They will go out of their way to make anti-feminist comments, and some may even take action. Ah, oh, that would be the making of this video, and that would again be me. Do I sound like I have no respect for third-wave feminism? Good, because I don't. I wouldn't want to be ambiguous. These people are the absolute scum of the earth, yet to her it's okay to abort a baby because he's male. This diabolical us-versus-them mentality pushed by today's so-called feminists highlights how feminism has transformed from a genuine woman's rights movement in the 19th century, which it used to be, I was in favor of it, into a top-down tool of social control steered by the CIA and other powerful interests to make women more dependent on the government while breaking up the traditional family model. It says, simply put, People generally hold more allegiance to their own families than they do the state. So what better way to destroy the family than to corrupt feminism into an us versus them movement, pitting women against men? And it's true. Like I said about the racism earlier, anything that you can do to get one side fighting against the other side is something they want to do. And by them, I mean the government. I mean our rulers and I mean the UN. That's who them is absolutely ridiculous that woman i don't know if she's got a special place in hell or god's got a special place in heaven for stupid stupid brainless people but it's got to be one of the two uh peter malcolm truth revolt franklin graham blasts ordinance allowing transgenders to use any public restroom and i i'm in favor of this listen if you were born with a schlong, you are a man. If you were born without a schlong, you are a woman. If you cut your schlong off, you are not a woman. You are a mutilated man. If you add a schlong where God didn't put a schlong, you are not a man. You are a mutilated woman. Learn it. Whatever you were born with, Go into your own damn bathroom unless it's unisexual. How's that? Did I offend you? I don't care. Franklin Graham is so right here. If you're a parent of a young child in Charlotte, North Carolina, you may soon want to take your child home to use the restroom rather than use any public restroom. In a sign of putting LGBT rights ahead of the safety of children, a Charlotte City Council is considering a city ordinance 
that has a provision allowing transgender individuals to use any public restroom that they prefer, which is absolute lunacy. Again, I have no problem. If you want to get your schmackle cut off, get it cut off. But don't expect us to allow you to use the restroom of anybody you want when you still have your schmackle, dumbass. Religious Christians are outraged, as they should be. Franklin Graham blasted the idea on BillyGraham.org, writing, I cannot see why city council would even consider this. Consider this. It is not only ridiculous, it's unsafe, and he's right. Common sense, well, there's none of that, tells us that this would open the door literally to all sorts of serious concerns, including giving sexual predators access to children. Well, it might not happen a lot, but I bet you it'll matter if it happens to your child. It violates every sense of privacy and decency for both people of sexes, adults, and children. And again, Planet Fitness can go to hell because they seem to side with this idea. Mark Harris, pastor of the First Baptist Church of Charlotte, said, and he was right, even if there is no ill will on the part of the transgender person using the restroom, you run the risk of your child being exposed to a biological male in a woman's restroom, and that is not good public policy. Again, it's not. These, I'm in favor of equal rights. Don't gay bash anybody. But don't put a gay man in a woman's restroom. What the hell is wrong with you? Paul Joseph Watson, February 25th, uh, 2015. Artist photoshops fat celebrities to lecture everyone about beauty standards. Let me tell you what, friends. I'm a little fat. If you think that I'm unattractive, it might be because I'm a little fat. You know what? I'm not out here encouraging other people to be a little fat, okay? Really, I should weigh somewhere around 165, 180. I weigh 195. Use the word fat when you're fat, dumbasses. I don't care who I offend, and I don't care if you try to offend me. Quit trying to change the status quo of the way people were born to think, you moron. In the cloud cuckoo land of third wave feminism, coronary heart disease is sexy, which is what you get when you're fat, while thin, fertile women who are healthy are considered offensive. And if you don't believe that that's true, you're a victim of brainwashing by the misogynistic beauty industry. David Lapira has a really interesting Photoshop piece on this. It says, 20-year-old Spanish artist David LaPera, who was in a relationship with a fat woman, yes, I said fat woman, created a series of photoshopped images to make them look fat, which made them look horrible. Is that wrong to say? Well, guess what? I'm too fat, too, so I, you ain't going to bother me any. LaPera's goal is to change people's minds about beauty standards. No. If you tuned in and you happen to like slightly overweight goth tattoo, I'm your man. If you didn't, you thought I was fat. Guess what? I'm fat. I can't even say it because I'm on, uh, I, I almost dropped an F-bomb. It says that's right, because according to feminists, men are being attracted to young, thin, fertile, attractive women as a conspiracy uh, foisted upon the beauty, cosmetic, fashion, industrial complex. What's funny is that a lot of the thinner women like slightly heavier guys, in my, in my experience. It says that this warped belief has a launch pad for the body sensitivity movement. A bizarre branch of third wave feminism which asserts that obesity, that is to say fatness, should be celebrated as some kind of new civil rights crusade. In embracing fat pride, feminists are promoting a lifestyle that is incredibly unhealthy. Yeah, you know what? Let me tell you what. I need to lose some weight because I'm fat. And I don't need anybody telling me that it's anything other than that. That is absolute patronizing BS. And it is encouraging people to be sick. It is encouraging people to take on standards which will hurt them. And that's why I'm making fun of it right here. Because it needs to be made fun of. I'm going to scroll down here. I don't even know why I'm wasting time on this article. But it's just so funny to me that I have to. Under this dogma, anyone who points out a myriad of dire health threats linked to obesity is guilty of fat shaming and maybe even a hate crime. Now, growing up, I wasn't the slightly chubby kid. I was the fat kid. I am not in favor of bullying. 
I am not in favor of shaming, which is what they're using the word for. I'm not in favor of hurting anyone's feelings. However, I'm also not in favor of calling fat women pretty. I do not want to date a linebacker. I'm sorry, I'm not going to change my mind to make a feminist happy. Supermodels, you probably don't want to date me. And you know what? You don't have to. And there shouldn't be a committee telling you that there are.